This video reviews how to locate an epicenter. Locating the epicenter of an earthquake helps geologists identify areas where earthquakes may occur in the future. Geologists use seismic waves to locate an earthquake's epicenter. Seismic stations are located all over the world. Seismic stations have seismographs that are used to measure the seismic waves. Remember, P waves arrive at seismographs first, then S waves. The first step in finding an epicenter is to find the difference in arrival times of P waves and S waves. Sometimes the difference in arrival times may be given to you. In this data table, the difference in arrival times was given. Sometimes the individual arrival times of P waves and S waves may be given to you. In this data table, the arrival time of P waves and S waves was given. In order to find the difference in arrival times, you would subtract the arrival time of the P wave from the arrival time of the S wave. For example, for Denver, Colorado, you would subtract 825 and 1 second minus 823 and 25 seconds. The difference in arrival times would be 1 minute and 36 seconds. Pause the video to try to figure out the difference in arrival times between P waves and S waves for Houston, Texas. The difference in arrival times would be 1 minute and 55 seconds. Sometimes you may need to figure out the difference in arrival times by reading a seismogram. In this seismogram, P waves arrived at 9.03 and 59 seconds, and the S waves arrived at 9.10 and 39 seconds. Therefore, the difference in arrival times would be 6 minutes and 40 seconds. Once you know the difference in arrival times, you can use a graph to help you find the distance from the seismograph station to the epicenter. In this graph, the difference in arrival times of P and S waves is plotted on the y-axis and distance to the epicenter is plotted on the x-axis. Therefore, if the difference in arrival times of P waves and S waves at a specific seismic station is 7 minutes, then that seismic station would be located 5,200 kilometers away from the epicenter. If you know the distance of three seismograph stations from the epicenter, you can draw circles to locate the epicenter. If you use the information from the graph you just saw, one of the epicenters was 5,200 kilometers away from the seismograph station. You could take a compass, which looks like this, to, to find this measurement. You would take the compass and line it up to an equal distance of 5,200 kilometers on this scale. This is the scale. You would take the point of the compass and put it on zero and open the compass so that the pencil was on 5,200 kilometers. You would then put the point of the compass on the location of the seismograph station and create a circle with the distance you opened the compass. The circle represents all of the possible locations of the epicenter. If you do this a second time, the circles will overlap twice. You now have two possible locations of the epicenter. If you draw a third circle, the circles will only overlap once. The epicenter is located where all the circles overlap. 